I'd like to take this opportunity to talk to you about lipohypertrophy. And in this slide, you can see that lipohypertrophy appears as thickened rubbery lesions that appear over time if the injection site is overused. And you can see in the pictures that there is raised shiny areas on the skin. And here on the next slide are just more examples of what overuse of injection sites can look like. And it's really important that you as a person with diabetes who is injecting regularly inspects your injection sites. Because if the lumps are starting to appear, then it means that you're using that site too often and maybe you need to rest this area for some time to let the fatty tissue reabsorb. You might be wondering what causes lipohypertrophy. And here you can see on this slide that there are four different reasons that lipohypertrophy may occur. And correct injection technique can actually protect you against this occurring. And we know from studies that have been done around the world that lipohypertrophy is common. However, lipohypertrophy doesn't just look funny or odd, but it actually has a major impact on your glucose control. And it can in fact, as you can see in this slide, cause unexplained hypoglycemia, glycemic variation, i.e. moving from high to low. So it is really important to examine yourself for these fatty lumps because we know that if you avoid fatty lumps, you can actually avoid the problems as mentioned in the, the slide. Here on this slide, you can see how you as the person with diabetes can actually tackle the problem of lipohypertrophy. And the way that we can do that is to make sure as healthcare professionals, we show you how to check for signs of these fatty lumps and how you would report any abnormalities that you find. Importantly, you should be shown how to rest areas, but also discuss with your healthcare professional what happens if you change from an area with the fatty lumps to an area without lumps. We want to make sure that you have access to the training, supervision and support and you can get this information from the Injection Technique Matters Guideline which is available at the Trend UK website which is www.trend uk.org. So now I'd like to explain to you how you would actually examine your injection sites for signs of lipohypertrophy. And it's important, as you can see from this slide, that you always do this in good light. And you can see that if you're actually doing this to someone else, maybe you're doing it to a relative or a child, it's always important to ask their permission. But you can see here, there's a list of things that you would need to do to ensure that you can check your injection sites and then note any lumpy areas. We also advise that you do this in a systematic way, following the contours of your body at the injection sites. And if you do find any lumpy areas, it's best to write them down the position and the size and take that to the healthcare professional when you next see them. If you do find any fatty lumpy areas, then we would advise you leave them and inject in other areas until that area has resolved. However, it is always important to re-examine that site in about three to six months time. In summary, lipohypertrophy has major implications for the person with diabetes. So if you can examine your sites 
and ensure that there are no fatty lumpy areas that you're injecting to you can actually be assured that you will get better absorption of your insulin you'll have less glycemic variation with probably less severe hypoglycemia and you're likely to need less insulin.